Christian evangelism of Gentiles before Paul. Peter explained at the Jerusalem Council that he was appointed by the Holy Spirit a good time ago to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Paul was at Peter's feet as Peter said this. Paul raised no objection. Peter's exact words were, and when there had been much questioning, Peter rose up and said unto them, Brethren, ye know that a good while ago God made choice among you, that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel, and believe. Acts 15 verse 7 Antioch Peter founded also in 45 AD a church in Antioch, Syria. It eventually had 66 local congregations functioning underneath its authority. Italy. Peter then sent many emissaries from Antioch to evangelize Italy. First, Peter in what can only be approximated as 42 AD, but which was obviously after 45 AD, founded a church at Rome. Then Peter sent emissaries from Rome and Antioch to found other churches throughout Italy. For example, Priscus was the first bishop of Capua in Italy, where he was sent by the Apostle Peter. By tradition, he was martyred under Nero. Likewise, Peter sent out Paulinus of Antioch to Lucca, Italy. Also, Darius came from Antioch with Peter and became first bishop of Catania in Sicily. So too Pancras came from Antioch, and was tasked by Peter to go to Tormina, Sicily. Peter went to Naples, and converted Asperen, or Asperonas, and later made him bishop. Ptolemy was a disciple of Peter and became a bishop of Napi in Tuscany. Paul first arrives in Rome sometime after 58 AD and finds a flourishing church. Acts 28 verse 14 to 15 Corinth Aquila and Priscilla had a Christian church in their home at Corinth. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 19 They arrive in Corinth in 49 AD because they left Rome that year due to the Roman decree exiling Jews in 49 AD. While one cannot be sure, it is a reasonable inference they were Christians prior to leaving Rome. Paul never mentions converting them to Christ. It was this couple who received Paul into their home upon his arrival in Corinth. Acts 18 verse 1. India. Meanwhile, in 46 AD, Apostle Thomas was preaching Christianity to Gentiles in India, converting 3,000 Brahman in his first major sermon. Apostle Thomas' mission to India is mentioned in many ancient Christian texts, including by Ephraim Cyrus, Ambrose, Paulinus, and Jerome. At Mylapore, not far from Madras, tradition has it that it was here that St. Thomas laid down his life in 72 AD, which is locally very strong. According to the apocryphal Acts of Thomas, the other eleven apostles were each allotted other nations to evangelize. India fell to Thomas. The legends of Apostle Thomas arrive a line up chronologically with events in India that date to 46 AD. Spain it should then not surprise us that Apostle James, the son of Zebedee and brother of Apostle John, is traditionally viewed as the first evangelist to Spain in 40 AD. The town of Compostela keeps alive his memory there in a chapel, and he is the patron saint of Spain. Since Apostle James died in 44 AD in Jerusalem, he must have been one of the earliest international evangelists among the Apostles. Tradition has it that Apostle James was in Spain in 40 AD, but then returned to Jerusalem for some reason, whereupon he was beheaded by Herod Agrippa in 44 AD. Is this history of James true? When the Apostles divided the known world into missionary zones, 
the Iberian Peninsula fell to James. Please note how identical this story is to the apocryphal book Acts of Thomas, which records the same division of the world for each of the twelve apostles. Even though these are not canonical books, when they converge on the same point, we must give and consider at Ion that the point is historical. The second proof that James preached in Spain is that documents dating to the late 500s likewise state this in what is called the Breviary of the Apostles. It says James preached in Hispania. Conclusion Thus, contrary to common presupposition, the Gospel of Yeshua, Jesus, would not have died out in Palestine without Paul. Long before Paul's first missionary journey in 47-48 AD, Peter was in Antioch, Syria, and from there springboarding to Italy, including Sicily. Apostle James, son of Zebedee, was in Spain in 40 AD, and Apostle Thomas was in India, evangelizing from 46 AD to 75 AD. Paul's first recorded conversion. Now let's turn to Paul and his evangelical record. Let's see if it compares at all to the widespread work of the Twelve Apostles. Paul's first post-conversion appearance is in Acts 13 verse 9 at Salamis. He casts out a demon. Luke then records Paul's message at a synagogue. Paul leaves without any mention of success. Acts 13 verse 42 Then Paul in Acts 14 verse 9 to 11 heals a lame man. The audience thinks Paul is a god. Acts 14 verse 11 to 12 Paul tries to restrain them by rebuking them. Acts 14 verse 15 No converts are noted thus far. Paul is then dragged out to be stoned by Jews. Acts 14 verse 19 Paul passes to Derby where it cryptically says, He made many disciples. Acts 14 verse 21 These are the very first converts Luke records made by Paul. These are the only converts mentioned prior to the Jerusalem conference of Acts. This is important because according to Paul's account, this is 14 years after Paul's own conversion. Galatians 2 verse 1 Lydia and the jailer and his family Paul's next success is with Lydia of Theatira at Philippi. Acts 16 verse 14 This leads to Paul's imprisonment there. Then the earthquake is mentioned which leads to the conversion of the jailer and his household. Acts 16 verse 33 so far Paul's converts are the unnumbered, many at Derby along with Lydia, plus the jailer and his family at Philippi. If Luke is trying to emphasize Paul's success at evangelism after about 17 years of service, the numbers are meager. Thessalonica Next Paul goes to a synagogue in Thessalonica and preaches on three Sabbaths. Some of them believed mostly God-fearing Gentiles, and some women. Acts 17 verse 4 